Welcome back to Extreme Festival of Motorsport at Bakisa Freeway and straight into the Mobile One V8 Supercars. Mobile One now on board with the V8 Supercars for a couple of seasons and certainly loving all of the attention that's been given to them on all the traction that's been supplied by this incredible category. The V8 Supercars have been going for a long, long time and there's a couple of seasoned campaigners that are looking to take championships this season. One of them being Franco de Matteo. Mackie Adlin, though, currently holds the number one plate. Can he do anything about the attack that's coming out of de Matteo and out of Reed? They're on the front rows. They come round for the rolling start, the rolling thunder here of the Mobile One V8 Supercars. And I'm about to go into the battlefields here of Pakisa Freeway. Waiting for those lights to go out. De Matteo will dictate the pace. Alongside him is uh, Thomas Reed. Good start from the back end of the field as well as they thunder down into turn one. And it's Thomas Reed who gets the whole shot. And the rest of the pack taunting to sort things out. Watching that mid-pack as well for Andre De Lange, His debut in the Mobile One V8 Supercars. He'll be a man to watch out for as we go on board here with Terry Wilford. Closing down on Warren Lombard. Lombard just uh, avoiding the attentions here of the Fuchs Silkeline machine as it heads down into turn two. Lombard hangs on. Behind him, you can see Corey Falschenk, and then it is Andre DeLange. Julian Familiaris is forcing DeLange into a slight mistake coming through there, and he gets the Corvette just ahead of that big Jaguar. Now coming on to the breaking point, down into the toe of the boot. Big V8 supercars, everything she's got through there. First gear through the hairpin, and then, of course, it's second gear up towards the Coke bottle. Brilliant stuff from all the drivers. Everybody's staying on track at this point in time and pushing those tyres to the limits. As we've seen in every single category today, tyre wear is a massive factor that has to be taken into account. Oh, problems in the background there. David Kutsia just runs ever so slightly wide. Steve Herbst right on his tail as they come through there for the first time and now down the back straight for the very first time in full flight, 280 k's an hour as they pitch it into the right hand here. The V8s are absolutely incredible to see here at the Bikisa Freeway. Number one V8 supercars now in full effect, and this first lap of anger has been good. Oh, Demetrio out of shape there. The Daltec Battery's Black Cat just getting a little bit sideways with the pressure being applied there by the man in third place, Mackie Adlam. Adlam just looking for a chance now to put that pressure on. Problems, though, is that Larry Wolford. It looks like Larry Wolford might have spun out. Yes, he has. He's spun out and gone onto the inside of the circuit, so Wolford could possibly out of this one. That's Larry Terry in the mid-pack here. He's just behind Warren Lombard looking for about fourth and fifth place. This is on board with Mackie Adlam as they go through the kink towards turn two. And Adlam just trying to bridge the gap onto the back end of Franco de Matteo. De Matteo applying pressure onto that Mobile One V8 supercar and the Mobile One sponsored Chevy of Thomas Reeb. Reeb though just soaking it all up right now. This little uh, Lumina just keeping it all together ahead of the big black cat. That Jaguar from Franco de Matteo, the Italian stallion, is uh, looking to pounce. He certainly wants to take that car out in front if he can. Third place, it is Mackie Adlam. Fourth is Warren Lombard, Terry Wolford, Corey Falschenk, Julian Familiaris. That's how they come out of the toe of the boot and into Coca-Cola. A little bit of pressure now from Familiaris, trying to find a way through the 20 Corvette. It's a little bit of a nimble car, but it's not quite as uh, punchy down the big straight here as the bigger cars are, but certainly great in the handling sections. And, uh, of course, that's what he's trying to use there in that handling section to close things down. Speaking of closing down, De Matteo is starting to close things down now on the back end of Reeb. Reeb could be in a bit of trouble here. The Italian Stallion wants that number one plate, so does Thomas Reeb. And Mackie Adlam in third place, just thinking to himself, well, is third place enough here? Is there going to be a chance for them to close me down and possibly win this championship? Warren Lombard, a new man to the series, this is his second season in the uh, Mobile One V8 supercars, and he's definitely got better and better every single time he gets behind the wheel of his machine. And then Corey Falschenk, and this battle between himself and... Julian Familiaris certainly getting better and better. Fulshank, remember, has had a couple of seasons. Oh, problems for Terry Wolford now. Both of the Wolfords out at almost the exact same place. That is definitely not the way they want it to go. The 5 car there of David Kutsia coming through. We're on board here with Wolford. Let's see what happens. Oh, he just comes through and just gets it lit up. And yeah, on a very similar vein to what we saw his dad do earlier on. Spun it out. Was very lucky to avoid uh, any uh, contact from drivers who were right there with him. But uh, he gets going again, but I don't think he's going to be able to get up anywhere near the front end of this field. Coming through into the Coke bottle once again comes Reeb. The mobile One car out ahead of that Deltec Batteries machine of De Matteo. Then it's the Adlam Auto car of Mackie Adlam. Familiaris now looking for a chance to dive on the inside of Falschenk. Falschenk has just kept him at bay, but have a look who's on the return to the front end of this battle. The Roofshaw car of Andre de Lange. And an incredible job being done there by Marianne Eminus, who did all the, the work on that car, and of course did all this, the uh, decal work, and great to see that they are now a big contender in the V8. So remember, he's usually a front-wheel drive driver and runs in the smaller saloon car categories, so for him to step up to V8 supercars is a big maneuver. Going to take a while to get used to these cars. 
140k an hour first gear and certainly arguably some of the most powerful cars in the country and even though there are sort of oh problems for Julian Familiaris Familiaris dives into pit lane that's going to give De Langer a chance and he's already got through on Corey Falshank Familiaris had got through on both of them in fact and pulled into pit lane so Jules had a bit of an issue and has to pull out of this one looks like he might not make it out there for uh, the rest of this heat that is a big big loss to the front of uh, this little battle it wasn't the front end of the field remember it was a battle for about 5th, 6th and 7th place Adlam still hanging on to 3rd we go on board with him coming out of the kink down towards turn 2 you can see the top 2 getting away but look how much closer it is there oh and problems for Aaron Lombard Lombard with a big puff of smoke there and I think that Ford Mustang might have just given up the ghost we'll have to keep an eye on that one he keeps going though but there was a huge puff of smoke coming out of Warren Lombard's car I wonder if something's broken on the machine the Pep Boys boys are not going to be happy about that if the car's broken. He has really been in contention for a podium, and yeah, he's slowing up dramatically. Around his outside is going to go Delanger and Falshenk. So it looks like there's going to be a, a bit of a change up here for those positions. Yeah, Lombard pulls to the sideline and out of it. Oh, look at this. Last couple of laps, Thomas Rebus just opened up the wick ever so slightly and got away. And it looks like the Mobile One car is going to be taking the victory ahead of the Deltic Batteries Jaguar of Frank and Matteo. To Matteo, the Italian stallion, he'll be happy with second place. It'll give him some points to uh, just maintain his lead in this championship, but it's not going to be uh, a lot more than what Thomas Reeb is going to be getting. Reeb certainly looking like he's going to be fighting to the end of this championship to take that number one plate. Across the line, he takes the victory from De Matteo. Mackie Adlam will come through for third place, but he's a long, long way down, and he finishes up just ahead of Andre De Langer. But some great, great racing yet again in the Mobile One V8 supercars. Let's get confirmation of that first race result. Reeb from De Matteo, then it was Mackie Adlam, and Andre De Langer in his first time out in fourth place. He beats out Corey Falshank, Terry Wolford, and Warren Lombard. As we get to the end of the first heat, let's catch up now with David Kutsia. Everything was fine as soon as I steered left. We forgot to check the faster. Although we finished the whole setup, so uh, to the right handers, the car was steering by itself. Left handers, I had to steer, I had to steer the car itself, and my forearm was pumped. But uh, I just thought to stay out there, finish the race. It was uh, quite uh, at some events. Second last lap, understeered again through the sweep. A bit later this time, um, instead of trying to slow it down, I just kept my foot on the power to keep the nose up so I could get through the kitty litter, so it worked. Um, yeah, so it was a uh, bit of experience, character builder, but uh, yeah, we'll be there for second race. Let's catch up now with Thomas Reeb in the Chev. It might have looked dominant because we started in front, but Mackie never let me go. You know, he's an old fox and he knows this track very well. So I thought I'd pull the gap and the next thing he was hooking onto me again. So he made me fight for it today, but awesome race and I'm glad with the win. Look at all the degradation and rubbish that is all over those Goodyear Eagle tyres. They've got to try and get it all off by the time we get into race number two, which is about to head out. Julian Familiaris will definitely be looking for a slightly better luck than what he had in the first one. So will Terry Wolford. He definitely doesn't want to make any mistakes here heading into the second heat of the Mobile One V8 supercars. Number one plate on Mackie Adlam is a heavy plate to be holding. Can he try and keep it all together now and stay in contention? He's got to try and take a victory here. De Matteo now will be uh, starting from the back of the field with Reeve and the reverse grid puts Steve Herps in the PPG machine on pole position alongside David Kutsia. So a little bit of pressure on those two boys as they head down towards turn one. Hard braking expected here and oh, that's how hard they do break. Mackie Adlam locks it up going into turn one, trying to get on the inside of Terry Wolford. Around the outside of him, it was a maneuver from Warren Lombard trying to follow through there on Andre de Langer. Watch out for Lombard on the right hand side of Mackie Adlam as we go on board with Adlam. Not a lot of room to play through the kink. And as they head towards turn two, look at that Warren Lombard, late breaking, keeps out Adlam. Can he get on the inside of the PPG Corvette? Oh, he has a big look. Doesn't quite get there though. And Steve Herbst has dropped back five positions from the pole position he was in as they headed off into turn one. Julian Familiaris now, late breaking, trying to get through there on Falshank. Falshank shuts the door. Familiaris tucks in behind him. Mackie Adlam side by side with Terry Wolford with Lombard on their tail. And then eventually it's Demetrio. Demetrio is uh, having a bit of a tough time to try and find his way through. But remember, it's a slightly longer race this time and they'll get a little bit more opportunities to get the, the passing done. The reverse grid certainly is a great way to bring a bit of action here. On board with Terry Wolford as he goes through. 
Uncini 1 and Uncini 2. This is probably about 170, 180 k's an hour, up to 200 k's an hour as they go into the change of gear. That's third gear he goes into and possibly into fourth down the back straight away as they go into the fastest part of the circuit. It'll be close to 280 k's an hour that we see Falshenk followed by Delanger through the fastest right-hander. Adlam all over the back of Wolford, trying to find a way past. Can uh, Terry Wolford soak up that pressure? He's got Kutsia just ahead of him. They've got to try and find a way through there on David Kutsia, who's had a much better start this time out. And as you can see, coming through there, change up. And Kutsia's gone. Kutsia's made a mistake. He's gone missing. In fact, there's a problem. He's slowing up in the background. You can just see that car slowing up. So he must have had an issue and probably some power steering problems as he came through onto the back straight away. Big loss there for David Kutsia. Here comes Adlam on Terry Wolford into turn one. Can't quite get up that inside line. Wilford saw him coming, shut the door, but Reeb is all over the back of him. That's why you can see a little bit more attention now being shown by Mackie Adlam to get through. He wants a car between himself and this man, Thomas Reeb, that we're on board with. The Mobile One Chevy Lumina heading into turn two. There's a move. Oh, that was a great move there from Mackie Adlam. He just wasn't close enough to outbreak Terry Wilford into turn two. Now towards the toe of the boot, De Matteo all over the back of Reeb. Larry Wilford, much better start from him this time, staying on track. And just behind uh, Steve Herbst, his good friend. Look at the late breaking coming out of Adlam, locking it up, and Wolford runs wide. Wolford got caught out watching the wing mirrors there, and I think that's what cost him to go wide. And uh, Mad Mackie Adlam just dived on the inside, late break, locked it up. I think Wolford saw him coming, tried to avoid uh, any contact, and ran wide all on his own. Sim. So Terry Wolford drops behind Thomas Reeb right into the clutches of his dad. Let's have a look at it from Wolford's point of view. The Fuchs car just gets a little bit out of shape as he tries to avoid the attentions there of Mackie Adlam. There goes De Matteo. And watch for the red car trying to squeeze through on him. There goes Reeb. So he loses three positions in the space of one corner. And I wonder if he's got some damage on that car. Speaking of damage on the car, Julian Familiaris pulling into pit lane. That's the second time he's retired. Larry Wolford coming in right behind him. But let's catch up with Jules. Uh, we went out for race two. We're starting in fourth position for the reverse grid. And uh, unfortunately on the start line, um, tried to put into second gear and it just... I had a miss shift and it just didn't go. Finally, finally got it in and uh, about third way through the lap, the gearbox just jammed in whatever gear it's stuck in now. Uh, I think it's first. So I just uh, walked it back to the pits and had to retire the car. But, you know, it was a big effort. The car was built in three weeks. So I'm happy to have just come and turned a few laps and uh, the car's on a decent pace for now. So thanks to everyone involved and see you at the next one. We certainly will. A big loss there to Julian Familiaris. Pretty wasn't in the high gear because he could have gone, gone and done a bit of Days of Thunder for us. But uh, needless to say, the battle continues at the front end. And it's Corey Falshenk who's got uh, De Matteo all over the back of him. Thomas Reeve trying to find a way through as well to close that gap down between the first two. Oh, and De Matteo just goes flying past Falshenk as they came out of the final corner. I think there was a missed gear there from Corey Falshenk. And that might give Thomas Reeve a chance. Yes, Reeve dives on the inside too. Oh, nearly has his nose cut off though. Very tight between the two of them as they came through turn one. And Reeve will keep that pressure on further back this is of course Steve Herbst he's looking in about fifth or sixth place at the moment in the PPG car such an incredible spray job on that machine and once again Terry Wolford I, was, I said there might be a bit of damage on that car as he went off and it looks like the handling is gone something's broken possibly an axle on that car we'll have to keep an eye on that one as Terry Wolford's going to try and nurse it home Thomas Reeb is not nursing anything Thomas Reeb is on the attack Watch for the cutback now. Slightly different line from Reed. Falshenk runs wide. He's going to try and come back on his inside and get the drive up towards the Uncinis. They're going to be side by side to the little flick. And then as they get up to Uncini 1, can Thomas Reed go around the outside of Corey Falshenk? That'll be an incredible maneuver. Steve Herbst getting it a bit sideways, having some great fun in his PPG Corvette, and Reeb has got through. He got on the inside of Uncini 1 and just managed to get ahead of Corey Falshenk. And Falshenk now drops down to third. Further back, Andre de Lange looking for another fourth place in his first outing in the V8 supercars for the Roofshore team. This is an incredible drive from that man. As I said, usually a front wheel drive specialist now in these big, powerful V8s powered by the rear wheels of these cars and the lock diffs and then makes it in basically a sort of 600 horsepower go-kart. As they get onto the main straightaway again, the top three getting away. This is the final lap and the Daltec Batteries Jaguar of Franco de Matteo looking for the victory ahead of uh, these two. That WPPS machine of Falshenk has had a fault this day. He's been in the battles here and there. This is a concern for me. Mackie Adlam so far back in fifth place behind Delanger. There's definitely an issue there on, Delang on uh, Mackie Adlam's car. And uh, the inability to catch the Roofshaw car of Andre Delanger is a big concern there for Mackie Adlam. De Matteo now bringing it to the, the final part of the race as he comes out of the toe of the boot up towards Coca-Cola. De Matteo just got to keep it all together now for a victory. He's going to share the honours, it looks like, with Thomas Reeb. One for one and two for two uh, for the two races. So this is exactly the kind of maneuver that uh, Frank De Matteo needs 
as Warren Lombard just nurses his car through. You can see the Pep Boys Automotive Boys have sorted that car out, but it hasn't quite got up to the same kind of pace it was in the, the first part after that little incident that he had. Coming down to the final corner, and it's going to be a victory for Dimitar. The Italian Stallion will take it in the Daltec Batteries Jaguar. He'll win out over the Mobile One Chevy Lumina of Thomas Reeb and Corey Falshenk in the WPPS Ford Falcon comes through for third. That's going to give... Uh, Another look at that number one plate to the Italian Stallion at the end of the day's racing. We'll wait and see. Dimato takes the victory ahead of Reeb and Falshenk. Andre De Lange, another fourth place for him ahead of Mackie Adlam, the current champion, Herbst, Lombard, Wolfen and David Kutsia. Let's catch up now with the Italian Stallion after his second race victory. It wasn't easy. Um... In the first heat, we had a little bit of a smoke problem and we sorted that out. I mean, I couldn't see in the first heat, but uh, the second heat, I mean, uh, we finished second, so we started right at the back. And I'll tell you, um, no, look, for the first four or five laps, it was one hell of a drive um, and a race. I mean, all the guys were the diving and diving and blocking and pushing, and I mean, I actually made mistakes. And, uh, and I mean, the Black Beast here didn't make one mistake. And uh, I'll tell you, we did the small changes and the car was good till the end. I mean, I just cruised the, the last two laps, I just cruised home. 